Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Resurrection, revelation, recognition. That's what this story in the Gospel of John is all about. God has raised Jesus from the dead. The resurrected Jesus reveals himself to his disciples. And somewhere in the process, his disciples recognize Jesus, though they didn't at first. Now this is a story, not in the sense that they made it up, but in the sense that a story is when somebody tells you what happened. Some things just are, but most things happen. They weren't, and then they are. I could tell you the story of how I became a minister, or how I met my wife. You could tell me the story of how you survived the war, or how you raised your kids, or how both happen to be the same story. We tell stories to show how things happened, and so does the Bible. This story in the Gospel of John is told as a symbolic story. That means it has more meaning than just what happened in the story. The story itself is true, and then there's more truth besides. It was true for the people in the story when these things happened to them. And it is, in some deeper sense, true for those who read or hear the story. It is, in some way, your story. Or can be. It is the story of resurrection, revelation, and recognition. The story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is at the heart of the story of the Bible. Every gospel tells it, every book in the New Testament assumes it, and every book in the Old Testament tells something about how God was preparing for it. The story of the resurrection is the greatest story in the Bible, but it is not the whole story. If the story of the Bible ended with the resurrection of Jesus, it would still be a tragedy. A heartbreaking story every bit as much as the one about the crucifixion of Jesus. If the resurrection was all that happened, it might as well not have happened. Two other things had to happen for the resurrection to be part of the greatest story ever told. The resurrected Jesus had to reveal himself to people and those people had to recognize who he was and what that meant to them. So back to the story. Jesus has been resurrected, but his disciples are acting as though nothing had happened. They heard what Mary Magdalene had said about the empty tomb on that Sunday morning. They had gone, Peter and John anyway, if John is the unnamed beloved disciple, to see that the tomb was empty. They even went into the tomb. But then they just went home. And now they're back in Galilee and they're going fishing. There's the resurrection and they're going fishing. What's happening here? The answer is nothing. If the resurrection isn't followed by revelation. If Jesus, does, Jesus doesn't reveal himself to you, as far as you're concerned, the resurrection never happened. What good is the resurrection to Jesus or anybody else if Jesus is the only one who knows about it? But then, according to the story, the resurrected Jesus revealed himself to his disciples. 
Just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. True story. And more than true. Jesus appears, reveals himself as the day is breaking. He stands on the edge of where they had spent their night, wasting their time in the darkness. Jesus reveals himself and they don't see him or recognize him for who he is. Symbolism? Deeper truth? Let's see. Jesus comes into your life when you are wasting your life, flailing around in the world's darkness. When Jesus reveals himself to you, it's like the dawning of a bright new day. But wait, even when Jesus appears, his disciples don't recognize him. How can that be? Well, it's the same old story. They've gotten themselves so caught up in what they're doing that they don't or can't recognize Jesus, even when he reveals himself to them. Resurrection, revelation, and still no recognition. Two-thirds of a wonderful story is still a very sad story. So what happens now? The resurrected Jesus reveals himself some more. He appears where they can see him. He calls out to them in their frustration and failure. He shows them how to have a better, even miraculous result. He invites them into his presence. He provides for their deepest need and draws them into the warmth of his intimate fellowship. And somewhere in the process of his revelation of himself, the light comes on. One by one, they recognize the risen Lord who has come and revealed himself to them. The beloved disciple, always quicker on the uptake, figures it out for himself. Peter, first to act, first to speak, but not always first to figure things out. Peter has to be told who it is before recognition dawns. But the light of day and of recognition has dawned for all of them by the time they come ashore and come alive in the presence of eternal life itself. When the story began, day was breaking. Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And then it happened. Resurrection, revelation, and recognition. By the end of the story, this part of it anyway, none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew that it was the Lord. And because they knew, because they recognized that mysterious figure on the edge of their awareness as the resurrected Christ coming to them and revealing himself to them, the power that raised Jesus from death to life brought the dawn of a new day to them. Now, the story is a great story. Now, it has the happiest ending a story could have. And because of that... They told the story over and over again. It's been told over and over again ever since. And we tell it again today. And we'll keep on telling it over and over. Every chance we get. Resurrection, revelation, recognition. It is the story that is always and forever true. And it is not just a true story. It is truth itself. It is your truth and mine. What is our story? Jesus died for our sins and God raised him from the dead to live in power and glory forever. Resurrection. And then revelation. The resurrected Jesus has revealed himself to every man, woman, and child for whom he died every man, woman, and child who ever lived or ever will. The resurrected Jesus revealed himself to you. You recognized him or not, 
as the resurrected Jesus, the self-revealing Christ. If you have not recognized him, he will continue to reveal himself to you in the darkness of your life, in the frustrations of your life, in your failures. Jesus will call to you. He will show you how to have a better, brighter life. He will invite you into his presence and provide for your deepest need in the warmth of an intimate fellowship with him. The resurrected Jesus will continue to reveal himself to you until you recognize him as your Lord. That is the story of salvation. That is how it happened for them. That is how it happens for you. In order not to recognize him, you have to go deeper and deeper into the darkness to avoid the dawn of the new day because he is always light. With him, there is always the dawn of a new day. Jesus is always ensuring that the story is being told in your life so that the story always has the chance to end with his happy ending. But here's something more. Even after you have recognized the risen Christ who revealed himself to you in your dark night, he continues to reveal himself to you in the light of your bright new day. And after your spiritual daybreak, recognizing him again and again becomes easier and easier. His calls to you are clearer his guidance more obvious, his presence with you more certain, and his provision for you more satisfying and complete. His fellowship grows closer and sweeter. Now, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. This is what you, many of you, are telling me. It's your story. More and more, you are recognizing Jesus in the things that are happening in your lives. More and more, your story tells about the resurrected Jesus revealing himself to you all over the place. Turning darkness into day, disappointment into success, uncertainty into conviction, hunger into satisfaction, and sorrow into joy. It's like you are the beloved disciple the gospel talks about. Jesus reveals himself and you get it. You look around and you see him, recognize him in just about everything happening in your life. And it's almost too good, too exciting for words. But you have to use words. You have to tell your story. Because there are some Simon Peters out there who can't quite make him out unless you point him out to them. Look, it's the Lord. And then they recognize him for themselves. Hey, you're right. It is him. And day breaks for them too. You see, the story itself is a light in the darkness for many, many people who are looking everywhere except where Jesus is revealing himself. They don't believe there was a resurrection. They can't concede that a risen Christ could reveal himself to them or would if he could. They refuse to recognize Jesus even when he's revealing himself right before their eyes. And so you have to keep on telling the story of what happened. What happened in the Bible, what is happening to you and in you and through you because you recognized Jesus and keep on recognizing him because he keeps on revealing himself because he was resurrected and lives in light forever. Resurrection, revelation, recognition. That's my story and yours, and we need to be sticking to it.